Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone, wherever you're watching us from. We want to welcome you to Wisdom Wednesday. If you're in your car, at home, we just want you to begin to appreciate God for His goodness. Just bless the name of Jesus wherever you are. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Lord, we exalt your name, O oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jehovah rings your name. Jehovah rings your name. Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Oh, mighty warrior, 
the sunset freeze free forever I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh Jesus, I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light into darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light into darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle walker, promise in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle
you never stop working We make a miracle worker Promise keep light into darkness My God, that is who you
I choose to love you, love you, love you, love you, Lord. I will love you forever. I love you forever. I choose to love you, love you, love you, love you, Lord. forever Lord help me say we worship
has won the victory that means no more depression or anxiety hallelujah yes he won it all for you yeah hallelujah we are more than conquerors hey yes a resurrected Jesus and there is life in Jesus and because he has won the victory there is no more death and because he has won the victory there's no more anxiety and because he has won the victory there's no more depression there's no more sickness oh, oh, oh. everybody said that could not hold him your hands up to him. Holy, holy, holy are you Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you Lord. The elders and angels bow the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, say, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Just the 
angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, Sing it one more time. Holy, holy are you, Lord. and give it praise. Hallelujah. For those of you that are watching us online, I want to welcome you to the embassy. And it's going to be a tremendous evening. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things you have to understand is this. You see, you can know scriptures and still miss Jesus. Amen. Am I correct? Yes, sir. The Bible declares that the people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So if you can have your gas move a little bit in this direction. To the middle. It says, the people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. So, we are talking about wisdom. And today, I want to go a little, uh, do a little surgery. Are you with me? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because the Bible says in John 5, 39, it says, Search the scriptures, for you think you have life in it. You've put your focus on reading the scriptures. So sometimes people tell, according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures, do you know what it really says? It's the spirit that gives it life. It's not reading scriptures and quoting scriptures. Because you can actually quote scriptures quote scriptures and miss the Christ. Because quoting scriptures has no life in it. Living scriptures has life in it. Can I have a big amen? It's called a spirit of the word. The spirit of the word. Everybody said the spirit of the word. And I have been saying to you, you can love Jesus all you want and still be broke. I say that wisdom is the master key. That we want to give you spiritual insights to dominate your space. The Bible says that wisdom is a principal thing. What we call miracles, I'll explain that a little deeper tonight. To somebody that is untrained in this thing, miracles to them is a mystery. Miracles to them is a mystery. So they don't understand what a miracle is. But once you begin to understand some things I'm going to say tonight, miracles are no longer a mystery. They just becomes your daily life. Are you with me? I talked to you about the importance of wisdom that it can determine your success, is the key to greatness, is the instrument for miracles. When you're negotiating, wisdom can help you persuade people when you're negotiating. It's a weapon against all your enemies and it's unstoppable. And I mentioned to you that a lot of people don't understand, they love Jesus, but they're wondering why their lives are not changing. 
They pray a lot. Ramsey come. We were having a discussion before the service. I thought it was a very good one. Let's grab one of the mics for him. Yeah. Sorry, we, we're going to just tell you we're going to advertise the Ace Paint. Nah. <laughs> now, we were having a conversation before service, and uh, you said that um, we talk, mentioned name, you, you had somebody working for you. Let's make sure this mic is it on. It's a new one. <laughs> so we have to. See, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so you were talking about a, a, a situation where you were. Somebody is always asking you as a believer, right? Yes. It's always asking you for what prayer. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit, a bit about it. Yeah. So. The um, other church I used to go to, he's been going there for a couple of years as well, probably about the same time. And he just started working for me recently. And um, every time we get off the phone, he's asking me for it, to pray for him, you know, and then he's usually saying, just go with what you're led by. And I say, okay, let's, let's break this. And then... Um, <laughs> now, it's, it's, see, everything he says sounds so deep and spiritual, right? Yeah. Go for what you're led by. And if you don't know any better, you say, wow, this guy's really spiritual. Am I right? Yeah. Keep going. And, and the thing is, they're, they're programmed for prayer. So, like, when you're giving them the good stuff that frees them, they're still waiting for prayer. So, they're not catching the good stuff that frees them. So, basically, they are programmed for prayer instead of programmed for wisdom. That's right. That's right. So, their mindset, I'm going to be dealing, pay attention to this, this, this word, mindset. Everybody say mindset. mindset. Say mindset. So you, you'll begin to understand the differences in what I call mindset when it comes to wisdom. When a mind is set, it's kind of hard for them to receive anything fresh. If concrete is set, you can receive anything else into it. That's why your mind is not supposed to be set. It's supposed to be changeable. That's why the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is supposed to be renewed. It's not supposed to be fixed. That means it will get better every single day. What you knew yesterday is nothing compared to what you're going to learn today. Yeah, you know, one of the things that really stuck out to me when I first started coming to the embassy, when I was coming to the power schools, you said we have to enlarge your capacity. And I, you know, I haven't really heard people talk like that. But when you said that, that started to get me to, okay, I got to think bigger. That's correct. And you see, one of the things I find out when you're dealing with mindsets is when you tell people what they've not heard before, they have a choice. Do I make adjustment for more or do I reject the more that is coming my way? And what rejects the more that comes your way is traditions. Everybody say traditions. Say traditions. It's what we've been told, not just in church, but sometimes at home. Sometimes by the society. You grow up in America, you have a mindset. You grow up in Africa, you have a mindset. If you're in Europe, you have a mindset. If you're in Asia, you have a mindset. Different parts of the world have different mindsets. And so when you're trying to introduce something that is new to them, they have to fight through their mindsets. Am I correct? And so some of them think, for example, when I'm talking to them, they think that I'm talking something from Africa. And I have to tell them, no, this is the wisdom that comes from above. That means if you're in Asia, it's for you. It's not an African wisdom. If you're from South America, it's for you. Because the Bible says the wisdom that comes from above is easy to be received by all. If it's coming from that place or that place, those from that place can receive it. But if it's coming from above like the rain, it falls on everybody. Can I have a big amen? So you asked the guy, um, the, you basically, he was asking for prayer and waiting for it. And yeah. then you began to teach. Yeah, I began to teach. And, um, you know, one of, one of my friends was kind of giving me the eyes to like, why are you not praying for him? You see, now hear this now. You see, 
the Bible says, don't look at their faces because they're trying to pressure you into a lower mindset. So they put the pressure on you, just get this over with. Now, if you genuinely care about the person and if you are loving the person, love is patient. Am I correct? So you rather, like sometimes people don't understand why we stay and we're the last one to leave the stadium. Until everybody's healed, then we leave. Because most times they want to minister, you minister and you leave. And then tell them to come back tomorrow. And the, the people organizing say, man of God, you know, it's about 10, 10 o'clock. We got to go right now. Now, I didn't come to your city so that I can give a nice speech. And you see, we got the crowd and everything. I came there because the hurting people that came from the different communities that are dying, the need that Jesus I carry. They don't need a fancy preacher that will come and just do his thing, give a nice speech, heal a few people, go home to the hotel and hang out. That's not my mission coming there. My mission is until everybody is healed, I don't go home. That's why I flew across the globe to come to that place. And sometimes it irritates the organizers. And so I asked them the question, I said, do you even know why I'm here? I'm sent, I'm not invited. If I'm invited, it's a different issue. But if I'm sent from God, I must complete my assignment. Amen. It is vital I finish my assignment. Why? Because they want to pressure you into doing the norm, what are called normal. But if you're operating in a higher dimension, all of a sudden, you have to just look at them and you're patient. And some of them will make a statement, just to be quiet, let's finish this. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you, have to, yeah. you have to put them in check. I know some of them, I tell them, if you have to go, go. I'll look for my way back to the hotel. Yeah. Why? I, I, I can find my way in any country. I'm not afraid. The people that meet us, actually, would rather take us. And they get upset. Because you didn't follow the, and I say to them, if really this is what you want me to do, why do you need me? Because you already know what you want me to do. You do it yourself. I'll get on the next flight and go home. I say that to a lot of people. But I don't tell. We say it very clearly. You say, if, if you want us to do it this way, why do you have us? You're bringing us because we are experts at what we do. Why? We are special forces. The reason you brought us here is to do what has never been done in your place. But you can't do it with the same old mindset that has been in the place. You've got to come with a freshness. Can somebody say amen? amen? And that's the problem with religion. They like the old things that make them feel comfortable. When you are operating in wisdom, you've got to go beyond your comfort zone. You've got to enter into another dimension. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So, and then the one of the prayer, and then you were trying to teach. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I just, I just pulled out the scripture. Mm -hmm. I pulled out Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. I, I said, okay, if you want me to pray for you, this is what I'll pray for you. And then I told them that, you know, it's not about praying. It's about getting a revelation. Because the idea is not me praying for you that are watching me. It's you having the hookup directly to headquarters. So that you stop bugging me at three in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom that camera to me. You got to pay attention. Yeah. Zoom it to me. Okay, that's good. Now, the idea is I will give you wisdom to win. Amen. We are talking about winning wisdom. I give you wisdom and you can defeat the enemy and uh, write and tell me the testimonies. That's what I like. You tell me, man of God, don't have to pray. I whoop the devil myself. Glory to God. And I said, hallelujah. That's how you're supposed to do it. Amen. And so you pray. You, did you pray for them finally? No. <laughs> you're a wild man. <laughs> yeah, but I, but I didn't say like I'm against praying. You no, know? we're not I, against yeah. prayer. See, the purpose of prayer is to know. You don't pray after you know. You act. Which is exactly what I told him. Yes. And then they and brought the up the scripture. Is, what about, says, pray unceasingly. Uh, pray without ceasing. Yeah. Okay, when you're eating, are you praying? So that means you're breaking the word. Yeah. You're going to hell too. I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> you know, all those religious people that always hold you to their own little issue. When it says pray always with all kinds of prayers or pray without ceasing, but you sleep. Do you pray when you sleep? No. So you, you, maybe you lack wisdom. We're going to break it down to three kinds of wisdom tonight. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Can somebody say amen? So the reason I brought that is you find out you can read the scriptures and not know what it says. You know what you are hearing, but you don't have an insight into it. Tonight, I want to take you into the inner chambers. Are you ready for that? Thank you. Let's clap our hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? So a lot of people don't understand. You know, when you talk to most Christians, the first thing they tell you is everybody's aim is to get to heaven. Am I right? Am I correct? Somebody will say, oh, the reason I'm doing it, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. And I'm, I say to people, well, I don't have a problem with going to heaven. I don't look at me like, aren't you afraid if you do this, you're going to go to hell? No, I'm not. I'm a citizen of heaven. If you're a citizen of the United States, they can't bar you from coming in. Read your Bible. It says you are citizens of heaven. If you don't know what a citizen really means, check your dictionary. That means if I am a citizen of heaven, going to heaven is not my goal. It's like being an American. My goal is not to become an American. I'm already one. Am I right? So heaven is not the goal. You see, there is something greater than heaven. Can I have a big amen? amen. There is something more important than heaven. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The Bible says heaven is his throne, but the earth is his footstool. Heaven is his chair. He doesn't live in the chair. He lives in the secret place. With those unqualified, don't come in. I'm from that place. So we're going to take you in a little bit. We want to un uh, unravel some things in the secret place tonight. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19. The Bible says by wisdom, hear this, 3 verse 19. I want you to see, it says by wisdom he founded the earth. So earth was founded by wisdom and by understanding he established the heavens. So if understanding established the heaven, understanding is greater than heaven. So it took understanding to create heaven. Am I right? This is English class. I can speak in, La I can speak in, in, in Spanish. Pastor Luis is here. Amen. Glory a Dios. <laughs> ah, don't make me go into my deep Spanish tonight. Deep Spanish. <laughs> All I need to do is give Pastor Louis the mic in the background. You don't put the camera on him. When I speak, <laughs> he responds in Spanish. <laughs> and the people say, God is speaking. He speaks, God. Really just people get all spooky. You know, a feather falls from the, from the thing and they call it angels. No, it's a feather. It could be a bird's nest. They say, did you see the feather? It's from an angel. No. I don't go looking for angels. Angels look for me. That's right. I am the son of a king. Angels are secret service. That's why you don't see them. They keep an eye on you. Can yes. okay, so somebody say amen. amen? So when I walk around, angels are too excited to see me. So I'm not looking for angels and the feathers from the pigeon. You see, when you don't have the real thing, that's when you start looking for those things. For example, the thing that because, listen, we've had gold appear in our meetings, gold feelings and things like that, but we never made that an issue. Why? Gold is asphalt in heaven. Gold is not the glory of God. Because the Bible says they have changed the glory of God for gold. That means the glory is greater than gold. So why am I going to go to a lower level because gold is precious here? Come on, I got something better. 
can have a big amen. And you see people say, diamonds, precious stuff. I just say, all these people that always find gold and diamonds in their meetings, why don't you sell it and really sponsor the gospel? I'm not looking for gold feelings, I'm looking for gold mines. Glory to God, and we can have real gold bars. And go win the, God, win the world with real gold. Can somebody say amen? Not gold feelings. I want the mines with the bars and stack them up really nicely, make a pyramid out of them. Glory to God, we can get the airplanes and we can go take out nations. Can I have a big amen? That's what we are talking about. Stop thinking. But do you know something? The gold mine? No, there is a gold mine inside of your gold mine. You are carrying treasures in earthen vessels. The greatest gold you can find is found in you. God hid his treasures in you. For him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And it says, for you have these treasures in earthen vessels. Are, are, are you with me tonight? <laughs> so I'm, I'm going rapid fire now, right, Johnny? <laughs> Ephesians, uh, Colossians 2, 3. For him are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And the Bible says, for you have these treasures in earthen vessels. So the excellency of the power may be a God of you. So why are you worried? In him I hid all the wisdom of treasures. The, the, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The treasures. So the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You see, Google is not a, a gold mine. It's better than a gold mine. It's a mine that can buy all the gold mines in the world. A gold mine. Are you hearing me? You come here, we give you the gold mine. Make you discover it. Sometimes digging gold is too much work. When you have a gold mine. Can somebody say amen? I like sweatless success. You see, what gives you sweatless success is called wisdom. Can somebody say amen? If you don't know how to navigate, see, if I'm going to buy a place, if I'm going to buy a gold mine, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get people with wisdom that know how to locate the gold. Pay them to do it. I don't want to do hard work. Find out whether there's gold or not before we buy it. We don't do luck. Life is never by a lucky draw. Are you hearing me? What you decide to believe tonight is what's going to set you for the future. Amen. You came in there crying, oh God, you know I'm going through this. Uh-huh. Do you understand the things of the kingdom? I've said to you, Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He wasn't preaching himself. He was preaching the good news about the kingdom. Can somebody say amen? So tonight we're going to be rolling with that because I want to make sure you are loaded in what you, we are talking about. Amen. I know a lot of times we talk to people that don't understand there's a difference between having Jesus as Lord and understanding what he taught. Are you with me? Are you with me? I know a lot of times when you talk to people, the first thing they want to do, they want to cry and complain about things. Can I tell you God is not moved by your tears? He's moved by you trusting him. When you cry out to God, it's different from when you cry out. When you cry out to him means you're trusting him for deliverance. But when you're just crying, that's a pity party. If you're crying for help, your help comes from the Lord. So he's not moved by Christ. He's moved by the cry of faith in him. Are you hearing me? He never turns his back from your, from your cry if your cry is towards him for deliverance. Read, your, read the word. I cried up to the Lord. Not I cried. <laughs> oh, my life is messed up. God's not going to show up. But if you say, Lord, I know you're a good God. My heart is hurting, but I trust you. Yes. Yes. 
God sends people like us to locate you and say, hey, go to that street. There's somebody there crying out for my name. And then we come and say, your day is today. Yes. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. That's how God operates. Yes. You are his hands extended. That's how God talks to you. Go to the street called Sent. There's a brother called Saul of Tarsus. And then God tells Saul, I'm sending a man called Ananias. He's coming to you. God talks to both parties. So that when you come in there, you know God has spoken. Can somebody say amen? amen. When somebody starts telling you what God didn't tell you, walk away. You can hear God. Say, I can hear God. I can hear God. When you come here, we'll teach you how to. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? You see, this is what we are talking about tonight because I want to take you on a journey. This is going to be sweet. Ooh. The wisdom of God. Everybody say the wisdom of God. Say the wisdom of God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 11 that wisdom is better. Is better than rubies. A lot of people are looking for money. Get wisdom and money will follow you. That's what we do here. Do you know what makes people panic is if they come first day to learn wisdom and there is no money coming, they get, oh, I'm going to look for money. No, 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 stay the course. Because think about something spinning in clockwise. If it's going to go counterclockwise, it has to slow down first and stop and then takes the direction the other way. Does that make sense? See, if everything is going clockwise, if that's been your life, clockwise and nothing is happening, and you begin to listen to wisdom, it has to slow down the clockwise, why, uh, the, the, the clockwise movement. Why? Because if, if it doesn't slow it down, you keep making the same mistakes. So it has to reverse it, and to reverse it, there must be a deceleration first. You don't go on reverse when you're full speed ahead. You slow down first, engage the gear, and then go backwards. That means you are going against the grain. You're doing what others are not doing. You're going to get a different result. Oh, is this helping you? Everybody wants to do one thing, they're going to get the exact same result. If you do the opposite thing, you get a different result. Everybody's jumping, trying to get on the roof. You just put a ladder and go up. <laughs> That's wisdom. Why sweat? And they are telling, well, I jumped really high to get there. I broke my leg. I got halfway. No, I just put a ladder and go up there and said, I'm already up. Who's next? No, but we have to suffer and break some legs. Because the guy ahead of you broke the leg doesn't mean you have to. Amen. Learn from their mistakes. Can somebody say amen? amen? Because your parents were broke doesn't mean you're going to be broke. Sure. <laughs> because the, the friends you hang around are broke doesn't mean you're going to be broke. <laughs> oh, well, you know, these are my friends. Are you sure? Am I right? Dare to do what they don't like. That means do what then it goes against their grain. Ooh. Then you can tell who's a friend, whether they're willing to learn and go with you. That's right. That's right. Are you with me? Yeah. Proverbs 13, uh, 3 verse 13. Happy is the man that what? Find that wisdom. Find that wisdom. Happy, so, okay, 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 now let's read that again. Let's read that again. Are you really sure it's in the Bible? Happy is the man. Stop. So don't co connect the happy is the man and they say, that's my husband. No. <laughs> <laughs> happy is the man, my husband. Is your name happy? Yes. Uh, the Lord spoke to me, happy is the man. It happened actually. 
one of our pastors. Yeah, Johnny them know the story. <laughs> Pastor Happy. <laughs> Say, happy is the man. Oh, Lord. That finds wisdom. So if you find wisdom, you're going to be happy. The reason why some people are not happy is because wisdom is not there. Stupidity is painful. I said something about stupidity. And one of our precious people, I know she, I understood what she was saying. You see, I didn't say foolishness, I said stupid. Get a dictionary and tell me what the, the word stupid means. I can tell you what it means, but I want you to see what it actually means. It means you lack intelligence and wisdom. That's stupid. Lack of it. So when I use the word stupid, is that what it says? Having or showing a great lack of intelligence or common sense. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I know the words I'm using when I'm talking. A lack of common sense. That's stupid. Now when I say you're foolish, it's a different story. When I say you're ignorant, it's a different story. So I know the words I'm using. When you lack intelligence or common sense, that's stupidity. So my usage is absolutely correct. Scallywag, okay. You guys, don't make me go deep in English. <laughs> Everybody say hallelujah. Is this helping you guys? Because I want to build this up tonight. We are going to get into some areas of wisdom that maybe you haven't thought of before. Amen? Jesus grew in wisdom. You actually grow in wisdom. You're not born knowing everything. Are you with me? Yes. Revelation is not static. It's always dynamic. It's always progressive. Are you with me? Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Are you with me? Yes. Matthew 13, verse 54. It says, And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, in so much that they were astonished. Hear this now. He came to his own country. Now, pay attention to the scripture. Listen, he didn't come to foreigners. He came to people that knew him. So they were used to him. But when he came to his own country, his own country, he taught them in their, in their synagogue. So these are his own people that were too familiar with him, but they missed him. They are people that daily see you, too familiar with you. They don't know you could be the reason why they can actually become greater. Because you joke with them, you laugh with them, they cross that line and miss what you actually carry for them. Are you with me? In some water, they were astonished and said, Where did this man get his wisdom? That meant he didn't get it from their schools. He, didn't, he wasn't part of the association or their club. He got it from a different source. Where did he get this wisdom? You see, pay attention to people. Because you did not get the wisdom from their school, they think you're foolish. You got it from a higher school. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you with me? Are you with me? They will call you foolish. Am I telling the truth? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 25. God's foolishness is wiser than the world's wisdom. Because Go ahead. 
Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Read it again. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Listen now. So if I am operating by the things of God, it will seem foolishness to them. The reason it is foolish, can you find the definition of foolishness? This is helping you guys. Because we're going to go a little in so that you understand when you're dealing with people every day, you can tell they think you're foolish because the source of your wisdom is not theirs. So they have no frame of reference why you can do the miraculous. Does that make sense? Because you are operating by different rules. You came from a different school. Their school is here. Your school is a hundred times better than their school. So to them it is foolish because they don't know any better. Read it. What does it mean? Lack of good sense or judgment. Stupidity. Good? No, foolishness. Yeah. Hear this. Stupidity as An example. Yeah. Now hear this now. Lack of good sense or judgment. Or judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at foolishness, what does it say? That's foolishness. It says, I said, I'm talking about um, stupidity. stupidity, yes. Uh, stupidity, um, behavior that shows a lack of, okay. Co common sense. Yeah, common sense, yeah. Say, one is judgment. Everybody say judgment. judgment. Say judgment. judgment. See, the other one is a lack of common sense. Foolishness is when you lack good judgment. That means you comparing two things to judge from. Are you catching it? So for me to judge means there must be two parties to decide. Does that make sense? So if I am foolish, I lack the discerning ability to come out with an accurate judgment. That's foolishness. Does that make sense? Now, a fool says in his heart, says in his heart there's no God. Why? He lacks the judgment. How can you say there is not, something does not exist when you haven't gone anywhere? Have you searched? You look in your room and say there's nothing else in the whole world because you're looking at your room. <laughs> Are you catching on? So a foolish man, you tell him, where is the broom? He's looking in his bed. There is no broom there. Have you looked at the rest of the house? They do that often, right? Children. Where is the, I don't know. It's under their feet. Very true. I am not repeating that. You can't say it's me that said it. Ooh, that's not coming out of my mouth. Let's pray. <laughs> yes, Lord. Indeed. Everybody say wisdom. Say wisdom. Say wisdom. Our biggest problem is not the devil, it's ignorance. I've heard people say all the time, oh, the devil is after me. I said, the devil is not, not doing anything to you. Your ignorance is slapping you up and down. We are blaming the devil for everything. Oh, then my enemy is attacking me. Could it be your ignorance that's attacking you? Man of God, they are blocking me. They are blocking me from success. They are not blocking you. Your stupidity is blocking you. Get some wisdom and the road is clear. I've never fought against my enemies. When I know it's ignorance. I go after ignorance and wipe it out. I have no more enemies. If a man makes an enemy out of me, that's their problem. I don't see one. I've got victory in my mind. So I'm not thinking I'm going to fight. It's over. That's the champion's mentality. I cannot be broken in my life. 
never, ever be broke. Why? The things that make people broke has been removed from me. Think about this, guys. Yesterday, we went out to help. Let's not talk about that. Let's move on. Let's move on. You can't say, I can never be broke. What people go to work for a month to buy, you just got it in like, would you like this? Yes. End of story. You just increased your value. Can I have a big amen? I mean, can you imagine some of those tables and $5,000 and they said, you want it? Yes, it's yours. You didn't pay for it. Why? The kingdom first, everything added. Do you know the Bible says that God loads you daily? Everybody say daily. daily. Say daily. daily. Say daily. daily. Oh, I like daily blessings. Ooh. I get up in the morning and I just like waiting for the blessings to back up their trucks to me. Glory. Saturday, I was just enjoying my, my time cleaning up the garage with the guys. 2.30, they called me and said, um, we were just thinking of you. We have a whole truck full of paint. And Ramsey says about $6,000. He said, can you come and take it? Let me think. Yeah. <laughs> it's called opportunity. I dropped everything else I was doing. This was opportunity. He was not knocking. He was yelling. The moment they say that, the first thing that came to mind was Ramsey. I said, okay, we, have, we need somebody in the family. Okay, Ramsey is covered. And Ramsey had Christmas. Yes. In April. Tomorrow. You're using some tomorrow. Look at him smiling from ear to ear. Isn't life sweet? Ooh, it's sweet. Daily load. Everybody has a daily load. And we couldn't talk about yesterday. Let's leave that one alone. That wasn't just nice, you know. If you, you see, people can, jealousy can just kill some people. <laughs> Pastor Lewis, am I right? If God is blessing you, they just get so jealous, like, why is he only blessing you? Ay, ay, ay. Join me and learn what I'm learning, and you get the same result. It's not rocket science. Don't get mad at the rich, just get rich. Learn what the rich do and get rich. Even there with your, with your, with your self, getting all in your way, It's like Solomon's eight six with me. Psalms? Yes, Psalms of Solomon's eight six. Can somebody say hallelujah? Are you enjoying this? Everybody say wisdom. Say too much of it is beautiful. Get it all. You know, some people are intelligent for the wrong reason. Their experts are making excuses for failure. Well, the reason I didn't succeed is because my left toe is blue. I'm behaving myself. The reason why they're against me, could it be the reason why they're against you is because you're a liability and not an asset? You come here, you become an asset. You are valuable to the world. Can somebody say amen? Nobody will kick anything of value out except they're ignorant of your value. And if they're ignorant of your value, exit. They don't qualify for the value you carry. I love Wisdom Wednesday. You get it all. This is meat. If you need to be ministered to after this, we have a healing line. <laughs> It's like we chop, chop, all this extras, we dump it. We want you lean and ready to take on the world. Yes. Can I have a big amen? <laughs> I love Wisdom Wednesday. Read that scripture. Sons of Solomon. Set me, as, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The <laughs> <laughs> Jealousy.
tell us it's too much. Hey! <laughs> when you're jealous, it's like you are in the grave. Your jealousy does not stop me. The coals thereof are coals of fire. In other words, your jealousy is putting you in the grave and then it's burning you up like fire. Which has a most vehement flame. Guess what? Your jealousy is burning you up. It's not burning me up. So quit being jealous and just come and learn. And come on the fun side of life. The pepper soup. Oh, no, okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody decided to tell us today that oh it was a plot about the paper suit because somebody brought a fake papers you think we're buying that redeem thyself <laughs> Johnny, don't say so Johnny don't say anything <laughs> oh Johnny gave you the look and he did that thing ah it was over <laughs> The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He says in Job chapter 28 verse 28. And unto man he said, behold the fear of the Lord or the reverence of God, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil. Everybody say evil. evil. What is evil? That's a good question. What is evil? It says anything that's ungodly. What is anything ungodly? Unbelief, yes, but anything ungodly. Anything that was not designed to make you a winner is evil. What do you think evil plots are is to make you a loser? from the purposes of God. Does that make sense? Anything that is designed to make you a loser is evil. Because you have to fulfill the purposes of God. Sin came into this world, why? To destroy God's purpose in your life. That's evil. Does that make sense? Okay, you like that definition? That's fresh from heaven, so just enjoy it. Every day it's fresh. Can somebody say amen? amen? Wisdom is a principal thing. When you depart from things that cause you to lose or to fail or to be defeated, that is understanding. Because understanding will cause you not to operate in that dimension. Because if you have an understanding heart, you are going to win in everything you do. Is this helping you? Boy, I haven't even gone to where I want to go. So let's... Whew, this is so good. The reason for failure in life is the lack of wisdom. We've said that. Am I right? Do you know that God wants to make you great? So some people say, well, we just, you don't have to be great. You know, you're being arrogant. Let me tell you, greatness is God's idea, not yours. Genesis chapter 12, God said to Abraham, I will make you great. Verse 3. It says, depart from all those things. Leave your father's house, your mother. Leave all the things that you're familiar with. Come to the land I will show you. In other words, get away from that atmosphere that has become too familiar with your limitations Genesis 12 let's look at it verse 1 it starts there by saying and God says to Abraham get thee out of their out of their, thy country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land I will show you in other words, out of your kindreds. Let's go back and read it. I want you to see how it says it. It says, get thee out of your country. 
Everybody's a country. Say country. In other words, there's a mindset there. And out of your kindreds, your family members, there is a mindset even within your family. Because they will tell you, people like you don't do this. Like you. Who are people like us? We are winners. You got to know the breed we are. We have the God type. If that's what you're referring to, maybe you're right. You know nothing about me. I come from above. And I don't need to explain myself to you. If you don't get me, you just don't get me. Because most likely, you're not part of my mission. Those that are assigned to your mission know the mission. And they, they can discern what you carry. Those that are not assigned to your mission would misunderstand you every day. And in fact, can you imagine... Ramsey owns a painting company. Tyler owns a different company, you know, designing interiors and everything. Now, if somebody comes to Tyler and thinks he's Ramsey, he's going to criticize Tyler for what he's doing. Because he doesn't know his mission. If you don't know my mission, you're going you're gonna to be criticizing me. Well, you're supposed to be doing this. Do you even know my mission? Were you there when he sent me? You were in there when I was born again. What's your business? Take a number and watch me shine. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, God wants me to be great. See, God wants you to benefit. God wants the world to benefit from wisdom. Now, if you're born again, you're a son of God. The Bible says, as the seed of Abraham, you will bless the world. It says, I'll make your name great. And through you shall you, the nations of the earth be blessed. Through you and your seed. Say, I'm a seed of Abraham. Galatians 3.29 tells you that. Galatians 4, verse 7. It tells you that too. Let's go with Galatians. Because I want to read these things. So that you can understand where you are. This is your inheritance. Do you realize this? You are the agent. Say, I'm an agent of positive change. Now, when I was in, the, in my office today, the Lord just gave, dropped something in my spirit. He said, how to handle yourself in your season of change. I'm going to teach that sometime. What do I do? How do I handle myself when change happens? You know, when change happens, the first thing we do is we panic because it's an un un unusual territory. No. If you are going to handle change, it's very easy. Remember, you're the agent of change. Stay in the cutting edge. Stay uncomfortable. You stay awake. If you're too comfortable, you go to sleep. That's why the Bible says, I wake you that slumber. It's a place that makes you feel comfortable. And before you know it, you adjust to that climate. When you are a thorough breed, you're hanging around with those that are doing something else. Are you hearing me? You don't want to hang around with, uh, with a different kind of horse. You want to hang around with those going your, your speed. Can I have a big amen? Some things are only temporary. If you understood that, say amen. Yeah. If you understood that, say amen. Yeah. Now Galatians chapter... 4 verse 7, yes? 4 verse 29. Verse, no, 7. 3, 29. Okay, 3, 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. Correct. Seed and heirs according to the promise. You are heirs according to the promise. And verse, chapter 4 verse 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. You are no more a servant, but a son. Verse 28 of chapter 4. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was are the children of promise. I just love the Bible. You read it, it just lays it for you. You want to just roll in that scripture. You know, when you like, when you have too much money, put it on the bed and roll over it. Oh, what do I do with this thing? Hallelujah. Praise God. 
And a broke person will be there scratching his head, oh, I wish I had a dollar. You're thinking, I wish I can give away a dollar. Just a different approach to one dollar. One person is crying how to get it. The other one is saying, what do I do? Too much of it. Somebody got to take it. Approach. It's all about a dollar. Different focus. Read that again. I'm loving this. Hi. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was. As Isaac was. Galatians 4 verse 28 we're reading. As Isaac was. Are the children of promise. As he was. Can I talk to you tonight? Yeah. We are not the promise. We are the children of the promise. You've read it before and you missed it. Is that what it says? It says that the children of the promise, if you're correct, but did you get it? Abraham was the man with the promise, but you are the offspring of the promise. Let me explain that to you another way. You see, you are the offspring of your parents. It doesn't matter what your parents were before. When they came together and you came out, you became the fulfillment of their marriage. Does that make sense? Yes. Did you get it? It's still flying. Okay, two weeks from now you get it. Glory to God. No. <laughs> Listen, three o'clock in the morning. I get it now, man of God. Glory. See, we are the children. Or we are the first fruit. That means I don't have to do the work. When two people get married, they do the work to produce a third that doesn't have to do the work. He just enjoys the benefit of the work done by the other two. Did you get that? In other words, as a child of the promise, the promise is already fulfilled. You are the beneficiary of whatever the promise was. Forget not all of his benefits. Just enjoy your life. Does a son have to be working hard to be loved by the parents? No. You're already loved. See, a husband has to love the wife. The wife has to love the husband. Kids don't have to care about who is loving them or not. They are born. Their job is just to grow and just enjoy the love. Are you catching on? Life is too sweet. In other words, if you are the child of promise, see, you are not a conqueror, you are more. In other, other words, the conqueror did the job for you. He just hands you the flag to pretend that you are the one that worked. You're just waving, we win, we win. Did you do the work? No, you're part of the team. You're the child, just running around. You see, when, the, when they win the trophy, they carry their kids to the field. And the kids are just like, hey, dad. They're enjoying the same thing. They didn't play a game. Yes. Somebody does all the work, they just hand it to you. Enjoy. Why wouldn't I just be in this thing forever? <laughs> Enjoyment. God loves me. I get up in the morning, blessings. I go to bed, blessings. In fact, while I'm sleeping, I'm getting blessed. I get up to hear the news. You just got blessed with this. I say, glory to God. I just enjoy life. But you have to come to that place where you were going in this direction and you begin to get wisdom and it kind of slows down and stops and you begin to get the benefits of being in the opposite direction. Can I have a big amen? You've got to change your thinking. Say change your thinking. Say change your thinking. Is this helping you? Is this helping you? You see, people do not understand this. Romans 8 verse 17 it says you were heirs of God 
and joint heirs with Christ. Now, I told you, we're going to stay on this because next Wednesday I'm going to open it up to understanding the different kinds of wisdom. Because saying wisdom, wisdom, wisdom does not mean it's the same thing. Because you can have experiential wisdom. But then you have an insight into reality kind of wisdom. Are you hearing me? And then you have what they call, what they call phrenesis, which is a mindset kind of wisdom. You have sunesis, it's a different kind of wisdom. You have sophia, it's a different kind of wisdom. But it's, it's used interchangeable and people think it's the same thing. So Sophia means wisdom. But what kind of wisdom is it? So when you say wisdom, what kind of wisdom are you operating by will determine the kind of results you're getting? Can I give it to you again? Can I give it to you again? If you're going by your own experience, you cannot pass the Red Sea. But if you're going by the Sophia of God into realities, you can operate and the Red Sea will open up for you. One person is operating by their senses based on the wisdom they've gotten. That's why the Bible says we don't speak the wisdom of this world. So the world has its own kind of wisdom that is calculated most time by the five senses. But then we come and say to a crippled person, get up and walk. We are operating on a higher dimension of wisdom. Are you with me? Okay, should I stop? Are you catching on to this? I'll give you a little bit and then we are going to, because we get, we've got to build this thing very, very well. Because if you don't understand what kind of wisdom you're operating by, you are wondering why your results are spotty. Why is it that you are doing what I'm doing, but I'm getting a different result? Have you ever wondered why two people do the same thing, but get different results? Could it be that one knows what the other one doesn't know? Or they have a different kind of wisdom that the other person doesn't know? Can I have a big amen? amen? The biggest thing you need after you're born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, is to have spiritual understanding and wisdom. Because that's what differentiates you from running around here, here. You see, one of the things I find from people is this. They want to listen to this one, that one, that one. Listen, once you come into a place of maturity, you stop running around. You're settled and you're building. If you're running around, running around, you will never build. You get tired of running around. Listen to this one, that one. And after a while, you almost get confused. This one said that. This one had prophetic words. I don't care about prophetic words. I do not despise prophecies. But I'm not led by them. I'm led by the Spirit. There's a vision on the inside that is clear. I have been illuminated. I have been enlightened. Are you hearing me? There is nothing left if you've been enlightened and you go back to the same old things. <laughs> oh my goodness. Life is sweet. You gotta say that to yourself. Say, my life is sweet. Say, my life is sweet. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Say, I am a joint heir with Christ. Say, I am a joint heir with Christ. Now, see, you have to understand what a joint heir means. It doesn't mean that if we have a thousand dollars and we're joint heirs, means that I have 500 and you have 500. No. We are joint heir of the whole thousand. Whatever is in that, in that whole heirship, guess what? That inheritance, we all are partakers of everything. So not half of it, not the whole thing. Does that make sense? People are thinking selfish, divide. No, no, no. He feels all things and he's in all things. In other words, his fullness fills you with his fullness. So I don't have half a God, you have half a God. No, I have the fullness of him, you have the fullness of him. So when we meet, we overflow. That's why one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand. There's an overflow. Are you, are you catching on? When you do things by yourself, it, you, can, you can be successful, but you can be a Google or Walmart. 
that hires thousands. You can be successful by yourself, but that's the limit of your success. I've even noticed people that play individual sports. They're successful. They make millions, but that's it. The only time they break the, million, the tens of millions of dollars going to hundreds of millions is when they start opening up companies to create brands and do other things and hire other people. Then they begin to go to half a million, half a billion, and then a billion. That's how you do it. You cannot be big being yourself. Does that make sense? You've got to bring people in and build with them. Can somebody say amen? And everybody becomes very rich. That builds things for generations. Is this helping you guys? Is this helping you guys? We are joint heirs with, heirs with Christ. If so we, that we suffer with him, we also may be glorified together. Say, I am glorified with him. Say, I'm glorified with him. Acts chapter 26 verse 8. Let's read that. If you don't know this thing, you can never be free. But once you know it, you begin, you begin to apply it. You see, people think that success is measured at the end. No, success is measured at every step. From glory to glory, from faith to faith. So one step of success to the next step of success. Don't wait till the end. Every day, success is there. It's a self thing, you guys, really. Acts 26 verse 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Why should we think it's a thing so incredible that God can raise the dead? It's not incredible, it's normal. And you are a joint heir with that. It's not an incredible thing for you to raise the dead. Are you hearing me? Every stage you must measure your success. Do you know that Solomon was a success when he was young? Let me tell you what God's dream is for you. You know what God's dream is for you? Success upon success. Upon success. Not success when you're dead. I'm a saint now. St. Charles speaking. Uh, I'm a saint now, not when I'm dead. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, these are saints. Oh, they're all dead. Saints. So Paul was writing to dead people when he said to the saints in Rome. Dead people don't read. He must have been writing to living people, the saints. In Ephesus, saints were not dead people. When they're saints... There was a song you guys were singing before I sang the last song. What was it? You have won the victory? I don't like that song. Let's change it. That's a boring song. Song total. Let me explain to you why. You have won the victory. No, I have the victory. Stop looking at he has won the victory. No, I have the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. My faith. So stop looking at, you have won, the, oh, you won, I'm still waiting. It's called revelation. Off your list now. You have won the victory. That could not hold you down. Hmm. But we've passed that. He's already ascended and sent the Holy Ghost. You're still in the dead and resurrection? He's seated and you're seated with him. You're still doing dead and resurrection. I, I don't get it. See, you are seated in him in heavenly places and you're still talking about dead and resurrection. When he died and was raised, he gave birth to you. And you're not staying that in the manger the rest of your life. You won't fit. You're growing. Soon you stretch out of the manger. Glory to God. 
But you see, the mentality we have is called mindset. Phrenesis, a way of thinking that we have developed that all of a sudden is based on experience, not based on revelation, epignosis. Are you hearing me? It's not based on epignosis. It's not based, no, it's no longer based on. So, what we have is what are called dinoscos, which is basically head knowledge based on your thinking but when you're born again what you have is genoscopes and then you have to grow by revelation epignosis everybody say epignosis then you come to another dimension which is uh, phrenesis which is now you have a mindset based on your experiences are you with me are you with me? The word friend, P-H-R-E-N, it's mind. It says in Philippians chapter 2, it tells you that. So it uses the word with that beginning, telling you the mindset. It's talking about mind. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Yes, and verse 4. We're going to read that. Philippians 2 verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Like-minded. Everybody say of the same mind. Of the same mind. Say the same mind. The same In mind. other words, if you're going to have a mindset, be like-minded. It tells you exactly what it is. Go to verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, uh -huh. but every man also on the things of others. Keep going. Verse 5. Let this mind aha uh -huh. see let this mind now be in, in you. you that means this kind of mindset that was in the victorious one be in you also the mindset that uh, well, yes let the same mind be in you that means in other words phrenesis means experience let the same experience in him be your experience and that's why i taught you a while ago about the experience of a christian is different from the christ experience the experience of a christian is what individual christians go and tell oh this is what the devil did to me he slapped me up and down oh i was oh god bless you you'll find now testimony <laughs> it's different it's called individual experiences I don't discount it. The reason why you went through some of those things was based on the kind of light you received. The kind of revelation you had. So if you didn't have the revelation that the victory is already won, the devil is going to eat your lunch every day. Every time you bring your lunch, it takes it from you. But when you know he is defeated, you tell him, sit down there. Get your hands off my property. Stop messing with my stuff. You don't call pastor. Don't call dad, mom. You tell the devil, get out. I'm in charge now. Can somebody say amen? And when he hears your voice, he knows, ah, oh, this one has is, is, is gone, is gone older now. They understand something. Leave this one alone. Satan does not attack everybody. He looks for whom he may devour. He looks. He tests this one. Oh, no, leave this one alone. I'm looking for somebody else. He comes to you, slap him down. He just backs up. He says, ah, oh, this one is too much trouble. Just leave. That's what after Jesus started slapping the devil around, <laughs> he showed up in a place. We know where you are. Have you come to cast us before the times? We know they cast themselves out. Hey, come back here. Let me cast you. No, no, no. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. The devil is begging to leave. Hallelujah. I was trying to, you know, in, in uh, this was in Victoria, British Columbia. It was very funny. I lined up 32 deaf people. I said, now I'm going to command the deaf spirit to come out. When I say lose, they all will be healed. I was trying to explain. And they said, I can hear. I can hear. I said, no, 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 no. I'm still explaining. I guess the devil thought the command was done. Uh, that goes my example. I said, bring the next group. <laughs> hey, the devil just got scared and left. I can hear. I go, you can't hear? I'm still explaining to the crowd what we're going to do. I said, if, when I say lose, 
the devil thought I was already, he just, he's so used to me just smacking him. I said, when I say lose, he thought the command was gone. Let's leave now. <laughs> oh my goodness. And then another day, I had people, I said, okay, if you're blind, just lay your hands here. I said, now loose. And tumors came out of people too. I said, I wasn't talking to the devil of tumors yet. <laughs> I was still in the blind group. I guess the devil just figured, it just, he meant all of us leave. <laughs> Poor devil, just, uh, uh, we don't want public embarrassment. Did you say blind? I'm just going to pretend I'm blind too. I'm just going to leave with them too. <laughs> because the Bible said he made an open show of them publicly, triumphant. So devil doesn't want open show, I just decide I'll skip away. <laughs> It's too much fun. And you saw the one in, in um, Uganda. We know who you are. Why did you come to our country? Same thing in uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The same thing. We know who you are. We went to Grenada. The same thing. We know who you are. I said, now get out. I we in India. This lady I never met before. She just walks at me. I know you. I said, yes. I cast you out of the other country. What are you doing here? Same little devil. But it, she said she knew me. I never met her before. Same devil with a different name. Yes. Name and address. Everybody say hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom. Is this helping you? Say I have success upon success. He is the vine. We are the branches. If you are productive, you can produce more. You see, if you produce more, you can produce much more. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Listen, one of the things people don't understand, we're almost done. I'm going to end up with this concerning wisdom. Do you know that the lamb does not follow the shepherd? It follows the sheep. It follows the sheep. The lamb follows the sheep. The sheep follows the shepherd. Does that make sense? The, listen, the sheep is mature lamb. The mature ones, the younger ones will follow them. Does that make sense? The wisdom you learn, you, you have, share with them and they'll follow. And then you follow. Can somebody say amen? And no one gets lost. Watch the shepherd go, he just, fall, he just goes, and the mature one follow. And then the baby one follow the mature one. The things I've taught you, teach other faithful people that will teach others. The things I teach you, teach others that will teach others. Four generations. Me, you, those you teach, and those that teach. Can I have a big amen? amen. That's how you multiply what you do. If you keep it to yourself, you'll never grow. Are you hearing me? You teach everything you know, and God will give you more. Religion wants to hoard it. The Bible says, he that hoard it becomes poor. But he that gives increaseth. All the failures make excuses. Just produce results. Can I have a big amen? So next week, we're going to be dealing a little bit with the three kinds of wisdom, understanding Sophia. You understand inroad into success. There's a higher wisdom. Only a few actually get there. A lot of people think, I was, when I was in the back there, I was thinking, how many people actually read the Bible, but they don't produce the results? You see, most times, I really don't ask for things. I can't remember the last time I actually asked God for things. 
I don't. Think about what things came yesterday. I didn't ask for it. You know what I asked God for? People. I ask for nations. I don't ask for things. Are you hearing me? Instead of the children you've given me, I ask for children. Are you hearing me? Things are created by those people you bring. I ask for technical folks, for these, for that. That's what those kind of things we ask. So the Father just send laborers. Send laborers. We'll receive them now. That's it. I don't ask for things because all things are mine. He didn't say all people, all things. Did you get that? Things belong to you, but you need people to move things. Did you get that? You have the idea for the company, you need people to move the company. Are you getting something? Raise your hands up. Say, Father, send me the best team to support the vision you've given us. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're not going to have people that don't catch the big picture. We're going to have people that will help you build for the long haul. Can somebody say amen? Listen, if you are willing to lose a million, you don't qualify to make a million. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. If you're willing to give a million, you can't keep a million. Because Satan would play on your emotion. Fear of losing it. Because whatever you're willing to let go, God will make it come back in multiples. That's right. Are you hearing me? Break barriers in your mind. Are you hearing me? Because the biggest thing to break is the mindset. That's why you're being transformed by renewing of your mind. Dealing with the devil is easy. Dealing with your mind, that's the problem. So when we talk to people, I said, just let your thinking change. For example, if you know that I don't need to pray to get rid of the devil, case closed. I, I command the devil to back off. That's not a prayer. It's a command. When I pray to know, when I know, I act. I never ask God for what I already have. I never ask Him to do what He told me to do. That's what most Christians do. Oh Lord, come and bless me. No, you are the blesser of the world. Read your Bible. But you know, it sounds so spiritual when we pray like that. Oh Father, we're just believing for you to do this. You know, use all the church talk. Am I correct? If you understand that, say amen. amen. Have you received something? Yes. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Next week, we are going to go five or five. Friday, everybody say Friday. Friday. Kingdom Leadership Academy is on. Amen. For those of you that are watching, you need to go to psom.org and register. And where is Mr. Tyler? He's just right there. Mr. Tyler. Let's clap our hands and welcome him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. What an amazing night. Amen. It's the beginning of some great teachings. We need to just get the download. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things. Say, everything is added to me. If I obey the word, it will be multiplied. The word never lies. The word is a declaration to people from all walks of life. If we just obey, I'm always amazed because the wealthy get this. But the Christians have the hardest time understanding it because their mindset, like Dad was talking about, is set on, I don't know, well, this could be and this could be and all of the hoops and bounds that they run through because stupid religion gets in the way. The kingdom says the kingdom suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. We're here to dominate this world so that the world can be changed. 
You don't do it by osmosis. You do it by taking what he has shown you. Take action and you'll have the result. Hallelujah. We're royalty. Amen. Let's be obedient. Let's continue to sow into this glory, sow into this kingdom. This is a house of glory. This is a house of reigning in life. So we want to uh, come and bring our gift before the king tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, those of you that are here, we have the envelopes. If you want to be a blessing uh, by cash or check, you can uh, fill out your details in the envelopes. And those of you that want to be a blessing uh, by way of uh, credit, you can go. Our sister is coming up now, Christina. Uh, you can come here, uh, that are, those of us that are here in-house. And for those of you that are online, you want to go to Christlove.org. Click the Donate button. Uh, we have for you other options there as well. They're going to pull that up on the screen. Just be patient. Uh, go to paypal.me uh, forward slash Charles and Defon. Uh, we can also go to the cash app, the cash symbol, uh, Dr. Charles hyphen and Defon. Excuse me, no, Charles and Defon. I got uh, the cash symbol, uh, Charles and Defon, and those of you that want to go uh, to uh, Venmo, it's the at symbol, Dr. Charles hyphen and Defon. And for those of you that want to pay by uh, check over the air, we encourage you to write that out to Christlove, uh, dot, uh, Christlove Media, uh, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. We're just going to sing a song tonight, and we're going to enjoy the presence of the King. Let's come, let's bring our gift. Amen. Hallelujah. You're magnificent, Lord Jesus. You're wonderful, you're glorious, you're excellent. And you love me, you have forgiven me. Shed all your blood.
stand up and um, let's say the grace. Say the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's a reality in my life now and forevermore. Amen. Before we go, I want to make sure we can have um, people that want to serve. Friday we start in the evening, so um, we're going to be, some of the guys are available Friday morning. We will go to help the folks at the store, the furniture store that donated to Restore because they, they need some help. Uh, they donated, this is probably over a quarter of a million dollars worth of things for us to move to be a blessing to the people at the restore. So Friday, we want to go there and help them. Tomorrow, if you're available, for two hours, we're going to go to restore just to help them arrange those things quickly. And then we are done. Okay? Uh, it's always good to volunteer. You see, when you're, the Bible says you're blessed in your doing. It's so important. We never forget that. You're blessed in your doing. When you go ahead doing the things God has called you to do, People are blessed, you are blessed in return. Amen. The Bible says, He that waters others, he themselves get watered. So that means as you're blessing others, good things are happening. And don't forget, we are going to be here Friday evening. Register for the school, and it's psom.org, St. Power School um, website. We want to be able to register for this uh, leadership school, and we want to see you there. Uh, last thing, if you haven't made an investment to some of the new technical things we are upgrading we would like you to consider doing that it's very important you know we can get some of the equipment today while we were watching we're uh, doing the live broadcast we had some little audio issues with i don't like that, that that kind of stuff we need to get new mics high quality ones that will not be giving us issues like that we want to be a blessing to the world we don't want to be interrupted when we get into a good flow want to be able to handle some business so um, I want you to sow into that also let's handle those things you know things that go they go back with use you know they, they go back with use because after a while you gotta up, upgrade and change some things let's go for it amen I want to thank you all for being here tonight and I will see you guys tomorrow Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday. okay I love you guys I see you soon so